Hey there, this is Seth. In this video, I'm going to show you how to program and change the settings for this motion sensor light switch. This one is from Eaton. It's the OSP10M. So this switch is pretty simple. It's not terribly difficult to change the settings. You don't even have to take the wall plate off or anything like that, assuming you can actually feel the tab down here. If for some reason you try to pry this open with your finger and it's not working, then you might have to take the plate off. But in my case, I can just feel a little thing here and push on it. And this comes right off pretty easily. And I'm just gonna show you what these little knobs do here. So this one here on the left, the idea behind this daylight sensing adjustment is that the daylight sensing feature should prevent lights from turning on when the room is adequately illuminated by just natural ambient light. So for example, this light switch is right next to a window. When there's enough light coming in in the middle of the day, I don't necessarily want these lights to turn on just because it senses motion. However, at nighttime, when there is no ambient light, I do want it to turn on when it senses motion. So you can control that with this little knob right here. And according to the instructions, this adjustment has to be made when the light level in the room is at the desired level for the lights to turn on. So I guess you have to wait until the right time of day when you do officially want this thing to turn on. So this might be something you have to revisit in the future whenever you walk into a room and you feel like it's not bright enough and the light doesn't turn on. That's the point at which you would want to come back and make sure that this is calibrated just right. And it says from the clockwise position, turn the dial on the left counterclockwise using a small screwdriver until you see this LED light start to flash. So I'm going to do that and there we go now it's starting to flash and then step away from the sensor to allow the device to calibrate to the normal light level in the room and do not obstruct the natural light and the calibration process starts when the LED and lights turn off which it already did and will take approximately 15 seconds after completion the lights will turn back on which as you can see it just did that as well as I was explaining how this works so based on this current light situation we've got right now in this room it's all calibrated but in reality as I'm recording this it's about one o'clock in the afternoon and uh, I I don't necessarily want this thing to turn on at this light level so I'll probably have to wait until later this afternoon or even at dusk and come back and revisit this and go through that same process all over again. And then this other dial on the right, as it implies, this sets the time at which you want it to wait before it turns the lights off after it stops sensing motion in the room. And uh, if you turn this thing all the way to the left, counterclockwise, it's going to turn off after five seconds. This is like test mode just to see if it's sensing you correctly in the room. So that's five seconds, but as you turn it further to the right, clockwise, you've got the option for five minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes and uh, if you have it set like in between the two numbers I'm not entirely sure if that means it would be like you know 20 or 25 minutes in this case or like 10 minutes if you have it between the 5 and the 10 so maybe but the one thing I know for sure based on the instructions is uh it can be five minutes, 15 or 30, possibly somewhere in between that as well. So I'm gonna set mine to five minutes because that's how I would normally want it in this room. And that covers all the things we can control based on these two dials. So I'm gonna put this back on. And there's a few other things you should know about this switch and different modes you can have it set up for. Um, so one of those special modes is called the reverse mode. So the reverse mode is used when people want the lights to stay off in a room while motion is detected. So kind of like the exact opposite of why most people use these kind of light switches. I'm not sure why you would want that, but if you do, there is this reverse mode. And if you want to set it up that way, you would just double tap this like that. And now as I move throughout the room, it's going to stay off. And after the time delay is finished, the sensor operation is going to go back to normal. So it's not going to stay like this forever. It's just for whatever amount that time delay is set for. Now let's go ahead and put this back into normal mode. Turn this back on. So another option is vacancy mode. I know this would make a lot of sense. For example, if you had this in a bedroom and you don't necessarily want the lights to turn on just because you're in bed and you happen to move, but you do want them to turn on when you push this button. And likewise, you do want them to turn off based on the timeout settings you set. And in order to do that, it's really simple. All you have to do is push this down and hold it for five seconds until this LED light starts blinking. So we'll do that. There we go. So now it's in vacancy mode. And if we wanted it to go back to the uh, motion sensor occupancy mode that we just had before, we would just repeat that same step, hold it down for five seconds until it blinks again. There we go. 
Now it's back to the original mode. So it's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Now, another way you can set this up is called override mode. And it basically just means that this is like a normal light switch where it turns on when you push the button and it turns off when you push the button. So it's not going to follow any timeout rules. None of this ambient light in the room stuff. None of that applies. Just think of it like a normal mechanical switch that only turns on when you push it. And then it only turns off when you push it again. And in order to make this work with the override mode, it's going to be a similar thing to the vacancy mode, but we're going to hold it for 10 seconds until this light blinks twice. So we'll go ahead and push this down and hold it. There's the first blink. Keep holding it. There we go. There's the second one. So now it's on override mode and it's going to work just like a normal light switch. And if we want to turn it back to the motion sensor mode that we had before, uh, we can do the same thing. Hold it down for 10 more seconds until it blinks twice. There's the first one. And there's the second one. So there we go. And then lastly, there's another mode called disable manual operation. And in this mode, the sensor will function normally with automatic sensing. However, the sensor will not respond to pressing the on off button. And just like the previous two modes, we can push this down and hold it. This time we're gonna wait for 15 seconds and we're gonna wait for this light to blink three times. So that's the first one. Is the second one. And there's the third one. So now it's set to disable manual operation. If we want to turn it back, we would do the same thing. 15 seconds, three blinks. There's the first one. Second. And third, it's fairly straightforward. I think this one is one of the easier switches to work with out there. I like how you don't have to remove the plate for this. And as long as you know exactly what to do based on what I just showed you in this video, it's pretty easy to set this exactly how you want it to. So hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching and I wish you all the best with your light switch.